Welcome back, compounders. It's Monday, and so it's time for our portfolio update here with Guy. So as you can see from the title, we bought one share of Microsoft at $215 last week. And then we also bought one other share of Meta at $93. So our orders slowly but surely are getting filled. And of course, we are happy about it, especially Microsoft is the new stock in our portfolio. And we really wanted Microsoft, but we also have limit orders at lower prices, as we've talked about in some videos ago. And today we wanted also to go a little bit more into the details of our vision for the portfolio going forward, right, guy? We have been talking offline about a set of companies that we are interested in. And so apart from these updates on the fact that we have bought Meta and Microsoft, as I'm also sharing here with a statement from Interactive Brokers as usual, we also wanted to talk a little bit more about our vision and the strategy going forward, since, as we said multiple times, this is a lifelong journey. And then to talk more in details about this strategy, I'm going to share this sheet that we have put together where, as we have entitled it, this is the Guy and Matt portfolio strategy. And you can see that we have some of the companies that we already own in the portfolio and some other companies that are in the wish list. And so, for example, you can see that uh, we have Meta. I think we have talked uh, at length about Meta. We have six shares of the company. The current price is $91 and we have a current allocation of 5.6% and we are aiming at a target allocation of 8%. Guy, any comment on Meta? As we can see, the current allocation is the percentage of the portfolio that is allocated to Meta. So it's 5.6%, but the cost basis is $740, which is 7.4% of the initial amount. This is due to Meta underperforming the market uh, recently, in particular, uh, in the last few weeks, the, the stock uh, lost uh, more than 20%. And so this is reflected here in the difference between the cost basis and the, and the allocation. Yes. And then similarly, we have Google. We have four shares of Google. And you can see that also for Google, our target allocation is 8%. And currently, in terms of the uh, cost basis, we are at 4%. So we have more to go for Google. And very similarly for, for Amazon, we have another four shares of Amazon. The cost basis is at 4%. So we have another 4% to go in terms of tar target allocation. And then Microsoft, which we have recently bought last week, we have only one share and we plan to go all the way up to 8% in terms of allocation. These are, for now, what we refer to as compounders in our portfolio. We have talked about these at length and the reason why we consider these compounders. But then we also have other companies in our portfolio that we put under the category of value. And these, for example, so far are Tiro Price. We own four shares of Tiro Price and uh, Best Buy. And we have three shares of Best Buy. Here we have a target allocation of 4% for both. The reason being that we do want more compounders in our portfolio than value stocks, but we do like Tiro for the dividend, for its story of, of paying dividends. And we do like Best Buy for its management, the dividend, and also what we believe future growth can actually be like. And so far, if you look at the target allocation in terms of the cost basis, we have 4% in Tiro price and 2% in Best Buy. Regarding Tiro price, we might be already at the uh, target allocation, meaning that we might not buy more of Tiro price. Regarding Best Buy, we have more to go. Just a general comment on this is that these are dynamic numbers. So this is our view at the moment. But of course, if something happens to Tiro price, we hear some bad news about the management, we might have to you know, sell it, for example, we don't envision this. Or for example, if the price goes down by 50%, we might consider adding some, some more shares to it and increasing a little bit the target allocation. So these are kind of extreme cases, but of course it might happen for, for some of the companies. And then as you can see, we also have a wish list and maybe I will add the floor to Guy. Yes, so in our wish list, we have both companies that we analyzed and so we have a price target for them, which means that we have set limit orders around those prices. and also companies that we just would like to own, but we didn't analyze so far. So in the first category, we can find Visa with a very high target allocation, 8%, or United Health with a 4% allocation, J&J &J Lowe's both again with a 4% allocation. We have uh, analyzed also Adobe 
and this is a we believe a very good compounder it underperformed in uh, 2022 very severely the overall market and uh, we would like to to have eventually a, a smaller allocation let's say 2% in adobe and in the second category so the, the stocks that we would like to own but we don't really at this point uh, analyze carefully and so we, we we don't have a clear price targets on them there's mastercard uh, louis vuitton so a, a little bit of exposure more to europe even though louis vuitton is a global company to novo nordisk so another sector to nestle to costco the the stock that is beloved to charlie munger to some staples uh, so uh, procter and gamble and to also stocks that i personally like that are operating in a sort of oligopoly they are very big they have very big market share it's very difficult to enter those markets for any competitor so uh, intercontinental exchanges is one of them and union pacific is another one of them and uh, we are going to analyze those union pacific was actually suggested by one of our subs we think that overall some of these stocks eventually will enter the portfolio but then we don't know exactly which ones because of the prices essentially but in theory uh, if we set limit orders for all of them and eventually all of them enter we would be happy about it and in the value part we already discussed uh, this so i will not spend too much time but essentially there are stocks that are probably not going to compound over the very long run faster than the market but we believe that they are underpriced at the price targets that we are reporting here so we would like to own them because we think that the stock if bought at that price will perform well but the underlying company will probably not grow faster than the overall market over the very very long run so these are plays that probably if they enter the portfolio will stay in the portfolio for a few years but maybe not 15 20 years i don't know so these will be stocks that we should then carefully analyze every now and then let's say while some of the other compounders are more stable stocks that we envision that if they enter the portfolio it will be very hard for us to to sell them of course as matt mentioned before anything can happen but overall statistically speaking we would be very happy to buy some of these compounders and and hold them for the very very long run i think this concludes the update on the portfolio for next week i think going forward our idea is also to enrich these updates with something that terry smith does in every of his uh, shareholder letters which is to kind of build an ideal company out of its portfolio by averaging with the allocation of each company's portfolio all the features that we usually look at as for example the gross margin free cash flow yield and so forth and to kind of give these numbers for our portfolio and to compare these numbers with those of the overall market for example as guy was saying i think this is always useful especially in a recession i think if you look at these numbers and you see that your portfolio is less leveraged for example than the overall market or has a higher gross margin and, and so forth or a higher return on invested capital this gives you more confidence and it kind of justifies you know the research and the work that you're doing to, to select these companies we don't have this now also because i think we're starting and so we are still mostly in cash but going forward we're definitely going to start presenting this data these features for a portfolio inspired by Henry smith and also because we believe it is important to look at these numbers for companies but also for a portfolio and so this is what to expect going forward thanks for watching until the end please subscribe if you think that this is bringing value to you and we're gonna see you on wednesday for a stock analysis bye bye